because like I showed you guys everything. I showed you guys my upsell. We scaled this one store, one product to thirty-four thousand dollars. Episode twenty. Can't believe we made it this far. This is crazy. I didn't expect the series to be this long, but this just shows how in depth and how much knowledge and content there is when it comes to succeeding in dropshipping. And I'm covering everything. In this video, we're going to be covering Google Shopping and Facebook Marketing, Facebook Shop, and we'll be covering the whole process and how it works. Before we get into today's episode, let's announce last video's winners for thousand dollars worth of courses or consulting calls with me. The winners here. If you guys want to qualify, all you have to do is drop a comment below, follow me on Instagram, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, and I'll be picking the best comment every single video. Other than that, let's get right into the video. What most people don't know, but Shopify actually integrated Google Shopping and Facebook Marketing. So on the left-hand side, underneath the Analytics tab, click Marketing, and it's very, very simple to set up. Now you go ahead and you click Create Campaign, then you can select Google Shopping. There's even Snapchat Story Ads, like Shopify is getting very smart and very integrate friendly. Um, it's allowing you to sync to all these ad platforms with ease. Now you go ahead, I open up Google Shopping. It tells me I have to fill in all these things. I need to create my refund policy, my terms of service. I need to add contact information. So if you click those buttons, it'll bring you to the exact page on what you need to fill out. And as you can see, my refund policy has been empty. I can't believe like I've been able to scale to like $12,000 without a refund policy. That's just insane. Um, I had the refund policy page, but I forgot to put it on Shopify's back end into the legal pages area. Um, but that's pretty crazy. Like I was able to scale so far without for forgetting the legal pages, which is pretty funny. So now I need to do the terms of service. So I'm going to click that, copy the terms of service, go back here, do the terms of service. While I'm here, I'm also going to put in privacy policy and shipping information. This should have been done during the Shopify store setup, but I just totally forgot. But it hasn't been an issue, as you can see with all the orders coming in. Go back to marketing, go back to create campaign, go to Google Shopping, finish Google Shopping setup, and then bam, we're in. Then you go ahead and connect your Google ad account. I'm gonna log in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick the merchant center, which has all my products, um, and then I'll link it up. I select an old merchant account that already had another associated store since both of the merchant centers I had already was connected to a pretty a different store. I went and clicked create a merchant center account on the bottom left hand corner. Then now they gave me a new merchant ID and everything was loaded like it's pretty automated like it does everything for you. Now for the product titles and descriptions I like to pick default title default product description, shipping settings, automatically import my shipping settings. Now that everything has loaded, I'm going to try click configure account, bam, updating merchant center account. While that's waiting, I'm going to try set up Facebook marketing, see if they could create an automatic DPA um, ad for me, a dynamic display ad. Go ahead and connect my Facebook account. I'm going to connect my Facebook account. Now it has all my ad accounts. Now I have to accept this Facebook sort of terms and conditions. Connect to my account. Select my country. So I'll put in United States because that's sort of where the majority of customers will be in the United States. Now I could go ahead and click create campaign. Going back to the Google Shopping. That's still loading. While I'm waiting, now I could go ahead and create my Facebook dynamic retargeting ad. It's as simple as that. Like it makes it very very easy like back in the day creating a dynamic ad was so difficult but this just makes things super easy and streamlined as you can see as you can see it's just like the facebook dynamic ad setup very simple and yeah that's the whole process when it comes to setting up your google shopping and facebook dynamic ads using the shopify platform now let's go back to our facebook ad account as you can see, I've, I'm scaling more horizontally just because the interest targeting has been doing so well. I'm going to try more interests such as gadgets, smart device, technology, 
Tech Insider, New York Knicks, Houston Rockets, Golden State Warriors. So I'm scaling out horizontally further because I only tested roughly around 19 interests. Like ideally, if a product is strong, you should first start by scaling to 50 different similar interests for your niche. So I'm just picking similar interests. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish those 10 new interests. So as you can see, our CPO campaign is not doing too hot now. It's 12 purchases in, the ROAS is 1.27, not doing too well, today at least. Um, but it is on a high budget, and this is just one off day. The main testing campaign doing very well with that 2.4 ROAS. What I also did was I did a duplicate, duplicated the CBO campaign, and I did Facebook newsfeed. So remember how we excluded Facebook newsfeed? Well, this time I tested Facebook newsfeed and it's doing extremely well, 2.51 ROAS. Also the new creative that we did last video, um, I tested it. What I did was I took all the best ad sets, put it into a CBO campaign, put the budget to 100. So I'm testing the new video with a new separate CBO campaign. So that's a result for today. Let's check out lifetime. Looking at lifetime, our Facebook CBO campaign doing pretty average, um, but our other CBO campaign has 44 purchases um, at $31.93 each. Still profitable since you know, we added in all those upsells, so a lot of people are spending $50. Oh, we got another purchase, so now the cost per purchase is at, no, it went up to $32. But the ROAS is 1.6, the Facebook one is 2.51, the main testing campaign is 1.44, um, but we've spent roughly 10 grand on ads by now. But that's sort of the update on the ads. And then we got the testing campaign, we spent $5. We're getting pretty expensive cost per landing page views. So it doesn't look like the new ad that we spent in a few hours, well, at least less for me, I spent less than one hour to make. It doesn't look like that would be a stronger winner than the original one. And my hypothesis on why that is the case is probably because the original ad was very simple. It was sort of not professional and those type of ads seem to do the best. Whereas the new one I created, I put in more effort. It looks more professional. It's more fancy and that doesn't seem to do as well ironically. But yeah, that's my hypothesis on why it didn't work better. But yeah, that is episode 20. We're near the very end of this series. I can't wait to reveal the 30K in 30 days finale. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for sticking through to the end. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are getting value from this. I really wanted to do something different. You know, my goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers. So hopefully you guys can help me get there. Like the video, hit the subscribe button, share this playlist and yeah, Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys are getting value from this. Other than that, I really hope that you guys are having a beautiful and amazing day. Hope you're doing well and thank you for watching this video and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with the next episode. Peace. What I'm doing is I'm starting by renaming the title. I'm name, you know, it's something long and complicated. I just want to make it simple. In this case, it'll be pink marble.